What's going on guys, Tony Avnov here with another trading lesson. Today I'm going to talk about two trades I made on DCIX and XTNT. Actually three trades total, two on DCIX, one on XTNT. Made a total of around 397 bucks, so just under $400 on the day. A uh, very nice day, I'm glad to be back making some you know nice profits on the day. Uh, past few weeks or so, I've been taking really small position size because the markets have been you know just really rough, but I've... I've come to the conclusion that the only way to adapt is by trading a bit higher priced trades and using a bit more size but being more conservative with my risk reward. And that's what I did on the XTNT and that's why I was able to lock in a nice profit on that one. So I'm going to go over both of those trades. Um, I'm just going to break down my pre-market watch list, how I knew uh, some stocks were going to run and uh, yeah, just go through that. Um, and also, if you don't know, every single day I give away $25 and it goes to a random commenter from the previous video lesson if you want to see who won that raffle stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna announce who won that so stay tuned for that uh, but yeah so let's just get right into this um, so this morning this free market uh, was really 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 slow um, it's, it's pretty common on Fridays especially a Friday where th uh, the markets gonna be closed the following Monday that it's gonna be very slow on Friday there's gonna be no press releases and there's no real volume in the markets but it doesn't mean that we're not going to still look for plays anyways because there could be some nice squeezes uh usually people don't like to hold uh, their stocks over the weekend so uh we could have some nice moves based on volume and chart patterns and we did have one that was a very nice play it was ftft this was on my pre-market watch list for a move um right here let me just delete these lines real fast so take away this uh, candle because this is like today's action. Uh, but I noticed this was moving up in pre-market a tiny bit and this is a cryptocurrency related uh, stock. And I just drew this, this small little trend line right here to connect these two points. And I saw that it started to break over this in pre-market. So that was a nice chart pattern. You see the past uh, three, four, five days, it's been uptrending and it breaks through that trend line. That's a strong chart pattern for a move upwards. So I put that on my watch list as a potential play and at market open, I was responding to some emails of some of my students who are asking questions. If you want to be a, one of my students, you can click the links, you can click the links down below. You can uh, join my chat room as well. It's a free for one week. Uh, so yeah, I was responding to some emails right at market open. I didn't expect anything to be running right as the bell rang, but FTFT, it ran. Uh, so let me just bring up, let me just link these real fast. FTFT once again, this will be the daily chart. Okay, so here's FTFT and you can see right at pre-market, we had a very nice breakout over pre-market highs and I missed the entry point, unfortunately. Here, let me just bring up my uh, pre-market watch list real fast. You can view this watch list completely free. Just go to my website and go to the blog. But here it is, you can see FTFT, nice, wedge chart pattern broke out this morning however there's less volume in this stock than usual and there's no news to bring in the hype however the chart pattern is still there and it's been down trading for a while so a, ver a reversal is possible here and that's exactly what happened we had a nice uh u-shaped type breakout over pre-market highs and a squeeze from 339 hit a high of over four dollars and 20 cents so very 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 strong move there almost a dollar per share but uh once I missed out on this breakout here, I didn't want to chase it up here. I didn't want to buy anywhere up here because it wasn't the ideal entry point. What I've learned over the past few weeks is that uh, in times like this, you cannot be as aggressive. You, you have to wait until you have the exact perfect point. And if you miss that point, you have to just sit back and let the stock move without you. Even if it does go higher, it's okay because you don't have that point where you know people are going to be buying. And that point on this stock is right here right at the breakout over pre-market highs. I didn't get that price, so I you know, just sat back and watched it go without me. And that happens sometimes and it's okay. You have to be able to be disciplined. You have to be able to just watch a stock that you knew was gonna run, run without you and not have the, uh, the mentality that, okay, I have to get in on this because I can't miss it. You are gonna miss stocks sometimes. You will not have the right entries and that's okay. As long as you just wait and sit back and let it go without you, you're not going to lose any money. You won't win money either, but you know, at least you're not going to lose money because you were being emotional. We have to be 
emotionless in our trades. If we miss our entry point, okay, done. Wrong trade, let's move on to the next one. So that's FTFT. After that, it kind of just, just squeezed back down. Not squeezed back down, it just collapsed back down slowly and had some nice pops, but overall it just wasn't going anywhere. So then it just collapsed and closed pretty far down on the day. So that was FTFT, no trade on that. The one I did trade was DCIX because DCIX, uh, yesterday and after hours had an offering and it just crashed in price really fast. And one thing about DCIX is that whenever it has a big, uh, like large crash, uh, usually the day after it has a pretty nice move. I I'm not too sure why it happens, uh, but that's just one common thing with DCIX. You can see here on this huge run from the threes to the thirty dollars. The days before it was down trading pretty heavily. It was just going down, 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 and then boom, it squeezed the shorts and just gapped up day after day. So. I was watching DCIX and once I saw that big crack, I had it on my watch list because it could have a possible squeeze up, squeezing the shorts, getting some nice volume. So once I saw this popping up on my trade ideas, low float scanner, let me bring it up right now. Let me just do this history, time frame, this morning. Let's go back in time. Actually, I don't think it popped up on my uh, scanner, I think uh, one of my traders in my chat room alerted it, that it was moving. So once he said DCIX was moving, I looked at it real fast. I saw the large buying volume and I saw that it broke over the key level of $3. Now, why was that a key level? $3 is the previous day high. So it got over the previous day high. So that means whoever was bearish on this stock yesterday and entered one of those positions they are underwater, they're getting squeezed up on their shorts. So once I saw a break over three bucks, I hopped in. Uh, I didn't get the best entry point, but on DCIX, it was an exception because uh, this stock, when it gets volume, it squeezes up very, very, very fast and very, very, very hard. So my entry point was 500 shares at $3.16. And Got in there, locked in my profits real quick at $3.35, made around, I think it was 87 bucks. Not a big win whatsoever, but a very nice, solid win. I'm glad I locked in my profits. I didn't get the exact top, but that's okay, uh, because right afterwards it, it did crack back down and then just went nowhere. And you can see it had one more pop. It got stuffed at 3.30, had a very sh huge drop, and actually traded this pop here. So I got in on this pop at three dollars and 27 cents all the way up here hoping that I was gonna have a breakout and go higher uh, but once I saw it getting really weak I just said okay this is not what I wanted it to do and I got out at three dollars and 16 cents right when I got out it collapsed this was the craziest drop I've seen in a while and all of my live stream viewers witnessed it live. I got out just at the right point. I lost like 10 cents per share, but that's okay because I could have lost a lot more. It cracked down immediately down to $2.83. So that's a big, big, big drop. And it was really unexpected. So I'm glad once I saw the signs of weakness, I hopped out because next minute it popped down 11% in one minute, which is just absolutely nuts. So after that, I knew DCX was done for, not to trade it anymore. So after that, I was done trading for the morning. I went to the gym, got some breakfast, I came back to the markets around three hours later or so. No, not three hours later, like, like one and a half hours later. And I was watching XTNT because people in my chat room were watching it. So XTNT was a higher priced play. It was also on my low float movers. Not that one. It was right here, XTNT. It was moving, you know, pretty much all day, but pretty slowly. XTNT right here, it was popping up. Larger float, and it's a bit higher priced, but, uh, you know, I want to take advantage of anything that's moving strongly. Um, XTNT did not have any news. 
and at this point in midday I was using the five minute chart and that's what I recommend you guys do as well because towards midday uh, stocks move a, a lot slower so you have to clean up that noise use a five minute chart and it, it makes things a lot easier to read so you can see XTNT all day was just doing these U-shaped breakouts over and over and over again so here's where I got in on XTNT I actually bought 1,000 shares of XTNT at six dollars and 35 cents and I got out at six dollars and 85 cents so I made a nice profit there just under 400 bucks on that trade to bring my total on the day to 397 you know minus commissions fees because on XTNT I bought with 1,000 and I I was taking partial profits on the way up um, the first lot that I sold was at dollars and 85 cents and the second lot I sold was at around 90 cents so total after commissions on the day 397 bucks on the day let me just bring up the profits right here there it is 397 the commissions were like 35 bucks which is no big deal and that was just you know a nice end to the week I ended the week green which is awesome that was my goal for the week and next week I'm gonna you know I'm gonna start like looking at these higher priced plays and just getting in that nice easy pop this was a a very very easy chart pattern to trade and I actually got a a, a pretty bad price on the break of this wedge because you can see it broke the wedge at around like 29 cents and I got in up here at like six and a half bucks so I could have done better on that one but uh, it was moving very strong it broke the high of day it squeezed up higher and this you know actually hit a high of eight dollars so I left almost a grand on the table there which you know is unfortunate but always have to lock in those profits because you never know what's gonna happen uh, you know in hindsight I could have like held on to half of my shares and watched what it did but I just wanted that nice win because you know the past few weeks I've just been having small wins small losses and just really going nowhere so this one was a good trade that I just wanted to lock it in and and start my weekend fresh and happy so that was my trades for this week um, and yeah so hope you guys enjoyed this lesson hope you learned something from these trades uh, if you did leave a like leave a subscription leave a comment down below and now we're gonna go to the winner of the raffle so 80 commenters on last night's video thank you all so much I uploaded that really late I went to the the casino last night and I thought I posted it up prior to the casino but actually it was you know pending it was like a draft so I came back at like 1 a.m. and then posted it so it was a bit later sorry about that but let's see who won so the uh, winner of the um, 25 bucks is Marco how do you decide on your trades for cryptocurrency um, I haven't I haven't been trading crypto quite recently just because of the tax issues I did find a software that is able to track all of your trades automatically so I'm gonna be reviewing that probably this weekend so stay tuned for that but really uh, if you just watch my video on how to day trade on Binance I just I look for the stocks that have are not stocks the coins that have the highest volume the highest volume and highest volatility and I look for chart patterns in that and I trade the chart patterns uh, you know with anything you're trading the only way that the prices are gonna move if it has volume if there's no volume there's no traders and there's no one to buy and sell if there's no one to buy and sell there's no one who can trade the chart patterns that you and I trade and make these chart patterns work so if there's no volume there's no money to be made you have to have volume in anything that you trade and once you have that volume and you understand that you can play these chart patterns use your technicals and make some nice profits so hope that answers your question Marco uh, make sure you send me a YouTube message with your PayPal email address and I'll send over that 25 bucks. So once again, thank you all for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.